The Holy Gospel according to the 13th chapter of Matthew. Jesus put before the crowds another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed that someone took and sowed in his field. It is the smallest of the seeds, but when it has grown, it is the greatest of shrubs and becomes a tree, so that the birds of the air come and make nests in its branches. He told them another parable. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. The kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which someone found and hid. And then in his joy, he goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant in search of fine pearls. On finding one pearl of great value, he went and sold all that he had and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a net that was thrown into the sea and caught fish of every kind. When it was full, they drew it ashore, sat down, and put the good into baskets, but threw out the bad. So it will be at the end of the age. The angels will come out and separate the evil from the righteous and throw them into the furnace of fire where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Have you understood all this? He asked them. They answered, yes. And he said to them, Therefore, every scribe who has been trained for the kingdom of heaven is like the master of a household who brings out of his treasure what is new and what is old. The Gospel of our Lord. Thanks be to God. I have to say, I love parables. I just love these funky little stories that we get that capture our imaginations and pique our curiosity. And I love them because every time we encounter them, we discover something new about them, some new insight, some part of the story that we hadn't noticed before. And these parables today from our gospel reading are all such great parables, but it is impossible to preach on all of them. They should have split that up a little when they were making the lectionary. So you might have guessed, given my location, which one I have chosen to preach on today. The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in with three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. Now, have you ever made bread from scratch? If not, today is your lucky day. You're going to be making some with me. Just a few simple ingredients go into the mixer or, you know, if you're a real bread maker, I'm sure you do it by hand, but I like to kind of cheat. A few little ingredients go in and one of the most popular food items in the whole world comes out. When you think about it, every culture around the world through all time and place has some sort of bread item. Oh, I don't know what my hair's doing there. <laughs> bread is a staple in every culture, in whatever kind of grain it's made with, however it's baked, whatever form it takes, bread is everywhere and has been for a very long time. Now, nowadays in our country, I know that we often talk about how we tend to eat too much bread, too much of those carbs, right? Well, that's because we have this white flour that has had all the nutrients drained out of it and we make our bread with it on our pasta and lots of preservatives and all kinds of stuff. So yeah, we probably do usually have too much bread in our country, but just imagine, put yourself back in Jesus' time in the Mediterranean, the bread that they would make from freshly ground grain, probably from your neighbor's field, They'd add fresh milk, maybe cow or goat, or maybe just water drawn from the well that morning. Maybe some honey for sweetener, maybe some delicious olive oil or some butter. Mm. Now that, that sounds like bread worth eating. So I am hoping 
that we'll do a little experiment here today that making bread together uh, will give us some new insights into this little parable that we have here. So if you're ready, let's get baking. What do we need to make bread? Well, I've got all of our, our basic ingredients here. We need flour. We need salt. We need water, a fat of some sort, and we are going to use olive oil in our bread recipe. And of course, the all important yeast. Yeast is really interesting. Can you see it in there? It's just these tiny, itty bitty little specks, so tiny. And yet it is capable of making a loaf of bread thousands of times its size. And without it, if you didn't put the yeast in, your bread just wouldn't be bread. It wouldn't be successful. It wouldn't, it wouldn't turn out. Maybe that's the first little hint at what Jesus is getting at here with this parable, that the kingdom of heaven is like yeast because its power isn't this giant, over-the-top, forceful thing like when we, we think of when we think of kingdoms. But really, the kingdom of heaven is small and yet so powerful in how it acts. It's almost impossible to see with how small it is. Actually, it is impossible to see. It disappears into the loaf of bread. You can only see it in this form. And then the only evidence you have of it in the baked bread is the, the well-baked loaf there itself. Like this yeast, and even like the parable of the mustard seed, the kingdom of God comes into our lives in small and almost invisible ways, and yet has a huge effect. Like the yeast, the kingdom of heaven is, is a necessary part for the recipe of a fulfilling, nutritious life that feeds yourself and feeds others. Well, that seems like a pretty good start already on our parable. Let's uh, dive in and see if we can figure out a little bit more. All right, so we are going to go in with the flour. And with our salt, if you're baking at home along with me, look up Paul Hollywood white bread recipe. Make sure you put your salt on one side, yeast on the other side. We don't want to mix those. And then we're going to pour in our liquids. And there we go. Okay, I hope you can still hear me over the mixer. I did a test and it seemed like it would be okay. So let's, let's hope this all works out. Okay, what did Jesus say next? We, we stopped at the yeast part. What did he say next? The kingdom of heaven is like yeast that a woman took and mixed in three measures of flour until all of it was leavened. Here's something really important about this that I learned this week. That three measures of flour, I think when we hear that, we automatically think maybe of cups, right? You must be talking about three cups of flour or measure. Here's what I learned. Three measures of flour is actually equal to 40 to 60 pounds of flour. 40 to 60 pounds. That, here is my, uh, 10 pound bag of, bag, bag of flour. This, uh, the woman would have used four to six of these in this bread recipe that she is making in this parable. Crazy, right? Just that one little detail, which, which seems like a pretty important part of the story, is lost to us because we don't use those same measurements today. And yet, the original hearers 
of this parable would have perked up at that and that would have meant something to them. So what does that mean? What was she doing with all that flour? We will get to that. Another thing that I learned, the yeast that they used in Jesus's day was obviously not from a little bottle or a packet. It was more like a sourdough starter. Now, I have never made sourdough because true confessions, I'm not a huge sourdough fan. I know, how could I grow up in the Pacific Northwest and not like sourdough? It is true. Um, but I've never made sourdough. And I know that's a, a thing a lot of people are doing right now or have in the past. But luckily, in our Wednesday Bible study group, uh, Mary in that group had made sourdough before, had pretty good experience with sourdough. So we got to ask her a lot of questions about what it's like to work with sourdough. So sourdough starter is based, sourdough doesn't use regular yeast like we use, but you get your flour, you mix in water, and then you just let it sit there and you let it ferment, let the naturally occurring wild yeast that's already in the flour, it's a natural product, you're just letting that bubble and happen. So you end up with this thick, blobby, bubbly stuff that becomes the yeast in your sourdough recipes, basically. So here are some of the things that I learned um, from Mary and some of the other ladies at Bible study this week about sourdough. First, it is not easy to keep it going. You have to be committed to keeping that starter alive. Because once you've got it going, once it's bubbling, you have to feed it. You have to give it more flour every week or give that yeast something to, something to eat, something to grow on, or else it will die. So you have to be committed. Every week you gotta go feed your starter, you gotta check on it, you gotta make sure it's bubbling. And you can't leave it alone for more than a week or two or it'll die. You gotta be there. This also means, another thing I learned, that you have to keep using it. You have to keep making sourdough stuff regularly. If you keep feeding the starter, and you don't make anything, then you're just gonna end up with this giant batch of sourdough starter that you're not using. So, I heard from Mary, you might even get sick of sourdough after a while. You're gonna be having sourdough waffles at breakfast, sourdough bread with all of your sandwiches, uh, sourdough everything, sourdough pizza crust. You might get a little sick of sourdough, and yet you have to keep at it because you can't let that sourdough starter die. But, this is interesting, then it can also become something that you can share. Uh, we heard a story about um, a friend who, would, who was into sourdough and would always bring sourdough starter when she visited to the point where her friends started going, oh no, here is, um, I don't know her name, but I'll say, here's Debbie and her sourdough starter again. What am I going to make with the sourdough this week? It's like a, the friend in the summer who has got all the zucchini and just keeps bringing the zucchini everywhere they go or passing it out to people walking by. You just got to get rid of it, right? It is the gift that keeps on giving. And lastly, maintaining a sourdough starter can kind of take over your life. You always have to consider its care and maintenance. When to feed it? Who will take care of it if you leave? what to make with it this week. As one of the ladies said, you can't control it, it controls you. This kind of baking is an exercise in letting go. Letting go of control or the illusion that we're in control in the first place. Letting go of the out outcome because sometimes that starter just doesn't ferment or sometimes that bread just doesn't rise. I need it to. We are not in control. And yet, with that letting go, there's the flip side of responsibility. You have to keep it going. You gotta nurture that sourdough. You are responsible to use it and to share it. Now I think we're starting to get somewhere 
in the parable here about how this relates to the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven, after all, is that thing that we pray for every week in the Lord's Prayer. Some of us probably every day. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. So like sourdough, like getting into sourdough, when we give ourselves to this project to build the kingdom come on earth with God, we got to commit. And we have to let go. We have to let go of our plans, our understandings, our familiar ways of doing things, and our definition of what success will look like. And you know what? We might even get sick of it or discouraged along the way. God's kingdom, bringing in the kingdom with God, not always an easy task, as we know, as we're in this time when we work for justice, when we are questioning so many things about our world and our lives. This is not an easy task. But as followers of Jesus, this is exactly what we are praying for every week and what we are working towards every day. And like with that sourdough starter, it's our responsibility to keep it going. And like that starter, we can share it with others. We can share this vision of what the world can be, God's kingdom come, and what God is calling us to do within that. We can share that with others. And we can keep sharing it until people get sick of hearing about it. <laughs> oh, there's Bonnie, and uh, she's talking about the kingdom of heaven again. Goodness, like the person who brings a sourdough starter to everyone, right? Think about the woman who made the bread with her 40 to 60 pounds of flour. Now she definitely was not making all of that for herself. She was probably feeding a whole village. Bread back then was not baked in an oven in the home. Not everyone had their lovely oven stacks, right? There was a communal oven often in the center of the village, a stone oven. So she would be there baking all of this bread for the entire community. And she would need plenty of help in the kneading of that dough. I, mean, I can't even imagine kneading that much dough and shaping it into loaves, getting it into the oven and then handing it out, preparing it for the entire community to feast upon. Likewise, the kingdom of heaven is not just mine, it is not just yours, it is even not just for Christians, but it is for all. It is a vision that we commit ourselves to with our whole hearts. We partner with God to bring about all that we are praying for in the prayer from Jesus. Daily bread for all, an end to hunger and poverty, forgiveness and reconciliation between God and between peoples and peace on earth. All right. Well, I think we're, we've learned quite a bit from our little baking experiment here. Our dough, let's check on it. It's starting to look pretty, still a little sticky. We're gonna put in a little bit more flour, if I have any, and just run that around a little bit more time fantastic you know what else the kingdom of God requires like bread a lot of waiting <laughs> requires a lot of time wondering is this what's right is this happening is this What's supposed to happen? Am I doing it right? Is this good? Okay, we're gonna get our dough out here. Wop it into the bowl. Okay. 
Okay. And now I get to cover it. And guess what? Wait. Wait, 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 wait. I'll find a warm spot and just let the yeast do its thing. Yeah, that's not a bad metaphor for the kingdom of heaven either, huh? Just let it sit and do its thing. So now we wait. And we wait. And we wait. Wait. And while we wait, the, those little yeasts in there are going to get to work, transforming those basic ingredients into something completely new. And so we wait too. We wait. And then we will get shaped, formed, Might even get knocked around a little bit. <laughs> this journey to the kingdom is not easy. Put it into the pan. And then we make some more. And then we wait some more. Until finally, we see the work that the yeast has brought about. Thanks be to God. Amen and yum.